So, Monaco is tiny, and I mean tiny. It's the second smallest country in the world, and its entire area could fit into Central Park, and then some. It's also synonymous with one event in particular. It slides down, away we go, Leclerc gets away brilliantly! Once a year, the country closes huge sections of its roads to welcome the likes of Ferrari, Red Bull and McLaren for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's the most prestigious race in the world and has been part of the F1 calendar since the 1950s. The race is lavished in glamour and has one of the most challenging tracks around. The street circuit is squeezed into tight-knit boundaries. Monaco is just two miles long and only a mile wide. Why does all that matter? Well, because the nation is incredibly desirable. Couple that with its small borders and a problem emerges. It's the most densely populated country in the world. And it's not like it has much room to work with. It's hemmed in by France and is facing a space crisis. There's only one direction that land could go, and that's out into the Mediterranean. This is how Monaco spent $2 billion to expand itself out into the sea and change land reclamation forever. Monaco is the playground of the rich and famous, not to mention the backdrop for some of the big screen's largest blockbusters. And that's all aside from, let's say, its preferential tax laws. It's also beautiful. This place is an exclusive haven along the French Riviera. It sits right here, surrounded by its French neighbour, nestled in a cove along the Mediterranean Sea. It wasn't always quite so small, in fact it used to be way bigger, which admittedly isn't saying much. But in 1861, it gave up 95% of its land in exchange for 4 million francs and recognition from France that it was a sovereign state. Today, this patch of land, less than half the size of Universal Orlando, is home to 37,000 people. Since the 1950s, the population has practically doubled. More people means more housing, and more housing needs more space. And so, using state-of-the-art techniques, Monaco expanded its landmass out into the sea by 6 hectares, increasing its area by 3%. Now, we've been reclaiming land from the sea for hundreds of years. It's how Monaco's managed to grow by more than 20% since 1880. Maraterra, or Portier Cove, is the latest addition to the country's footprint. But just because they've done it before doesn't mean it's straightforward. There are various challenges with expanding your landmass, including habitat destruction, impacting underwater ecosystems, pollution from sediment runoff, and long-term stability. But Monaco's approach was in good hands. Supported by a cast of engineers and marine biologists, a dream team of Renzo Piano, Denis Valaud, Jean Pistre, and Michel Divinier created the new district's design. They absolutely couldn't have built Maraterra without a great team. And I've always found that if you want to succeed at anything, you've got to have the right people around you. That's definitely been the case for me at the B1M. But as the channel gets bigger and we try and make bigger and better videos all the time, the amount of paperwork I get buried under is pretty overwhelming. But help is at hand, because recently I've been getting some support from my new best friend, Odoo, an all-in-one business management platform. Now, I do have some real friends, some physical, actual people friends, but none of them are what I would describe as an all-in-one business management platform. I use Odoo to sign, send, and manage documents online, and that saves me time so I have more time to do the stuff I actually enjoy doing, like making video content for you guys. I can easily customize any document just by dragging in the fields I need, like name, date, and signature, and then assigning them to specific people. I love traveling the world and visiting epic construction projects, but it's really important that I can work on the move. The great thing about Odoo Sign is I can access and sign documents from any device at any time and get live updates on their status. Before you ask, Odoo complies with the electronic signature standards in over 100 countries, so I haven't got to worry about the legal stuff. But here's the best bit. With Odoo, your first app is free for life, including unlimited hosting and support just in case you get stuck. It massively helps us out when you guys go and check out our video sponsors, so please do click the link to learn more about Odoo. We'd really appreciate it. Monaco sits in an area that's rich in sea life. The Mediterranean is home to nearly 6,000 different species, and this extension lies directly between two marine reserves. The seagrass there is known as Posidonia oceanica. The meadows are declining around the world, but they play a vital ecological role. Not only are they important for sea life, but they protect coasts from erosion and storms and sequester carbon. 
So preserving the underwater environment here was crucial. Marine biologists and divers relocated large sections of the seagrass. Around 500 square meters was transplanted using the sod method, which is a technique where you mechanically move large areas and rehome it with strong anchorage. Not only was it successful, but this method has the potential to completely change the way we look at land reclamation and the protection of our seas. Maraterra was designed with a curved footprint to respect the natural flow of the sea or currentology, and that footprint was created using a belt of caissons. Now, a caisson is a large watertight box that's used for the construction of piers, bridges, and seawalls. In this case, the belt acted as a wall to stop the fill material from simply floating away. Contractors spent three years dredging silt from the seabed to expose the bedrock to construct the caissons on, and they used these specially designed submerged anti-turbidity screens that were put in around the site to try and minimize the impact of the dredging. In total, 18 caissons weighing 10,000 tonnes were constructed first in Marseille and then dragged out to sea by huge ships, sometimes trailing the ship by up to 800 metres. It took three to five days to move and place each one, depending on what the weather was doing. Once in Monaco, the caissons were then placed to build the belt. To create the landmass that the buildings of Maraterra would sit on, the space was filled with over 1.5 million tonnes of rock and marine sand. Using caissons meant nothing had to be implemented below sea level, therefore minimizing the impact on the seabed. Incredibly, they also double up as homes for the wildlife. It's hoped that the grooves on their surfaces are going to encourage algae growth and foster biodiversity. When we come back above water, we can see Maraterra has been fully furnished with greenery and luxury. It's going to be the, the greenest part of Monaco, which is uh, which is uh, it's very interesting to to think. And we the project included a seafront promenade, a park, a marina, uh, some retail, some restaurant, and and some cultural space, contributing to the economic and social uh, vibrancy of, of of the principality. So altogether, it brings really a, a, a new area and a new dimension of, of Monaco. The final product is stunning and pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a new development in Monaco. Now, the big question is, what happens when the sea levels rise? Well, that's been thought about too, because every structure here has the ability to be raised. Continuing Maraterra's theme of modern design, the harbour has moving piers that can be adjusted depending on the level of the sea to prevent coastal flooding. Now, all of this sounds pretty great. The greenest urban area in Monaco, innovative engineering, and properties sold before the inauguration in December last year. But the fact those homes sold so quickly raises a question. Is this 3% expansion big enough for the future? Well, here's the thing. Maraterra is about as big as it possibly could be. Land reclamation can only be achieved down to certain depths, and this new piece of land is already reaching down 50 metres below the waves. It means that it'll probably be Monaco's final land reclamation project. After 50 metres, the problem of Mediterranean goes down really steep. So from 50, you go to 80, to go to 100, to go to 200. Then, of course, you can, you know, uh, then after it's a term of, of, uh, of ecological and, and, and money, but it's, it's make no much, much, much more sense. So it's becoming really hard. It's no secret that the global population is going to go up. In the next 75 years, it's expected to hit 10 billion. But without land reclamation or an ill-advised evasion of France, what can Monaco do? We are thinking of other way, because there is other way, if you think, um, you know, to, to, to do things. So, you know, which, which is, this is great with technology and, and, and construction. Today is, is uh, you know, the, uh, I would say the sky is the limit, but, uh, you know, the, you, you can really uh, come with some very innovative way uh, to, do, uh, to, to do things and, and, and to, to build on, on the water. It's certainly intriguing. One solution is to look at what another tiny nation has done. 5,000 miles away in the Indian Ocean is the smallest country in Asia. The Maldives is a truly stunning dream paradise, and I should know having spent my honeymoon there 14 happy years ago. But it faces a critical issue. About 80% of its landmass is less than one meter above the sea level. Since my last visit, the nation has been working on the design of the future to solve the problem, a floating city.
Due to be completed in 2027, the city comprises connected hexagonal islands. The concrete hulls are then screwed to the seabed with huge steel stilts that allow it to move with the motion of the ocean. Challenges still remain with floating cities, of course. Water depth makes things tricky, and the generation of power away from the mainland has to be considered. But it's a more viable solution for the future. So what about building upwards? Well, Monaco already has skyscrapers, the tallest being the 170-meter Odeon Tower. But if we're being realistic, the chances of seeing a wave of similar towers being approved are pretty slim. The nation sits on the side of a mountain next to the sea, and its geology is very challenging. And as you're no doubt clearly aware by now, space for new development here is limited. The place is covered in historic buildings, and skyscrapers tend to spoil the coastal views. So what happens next for Monaco is anyone's guess. But for the time being, the nation can take pride in a job well done. Maratera seamlessly blends into the coastline as if it's been there for years. And for now, the extension answers the nation's housing issues. We just don't know what Monaco will do in the future if its population increases. But Maratera is an example of what can be achieved. This is land reclamation like you've never seen it before, and a model that could soon be the gold standard adopted around the world. This video was made possible by Odoo. Check them out at the link below. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.